guys, what is going on? Joseph Vollmer here. The video you're about to see is the procedure for doing a water pump on a 2003-ish Chevy Trailblazer with a 4.2 in it. Pretty straightforward job. So I'm going to try and cut the video down, make it as streamlined as possible, show you the important parts. That way you can move through it uh, pretty quickly. Do me a favor, guys. As always, please subscribe to the channel. Please don't forget to rate the videos when they're all over with. Share these with your friends, please. That way we can get some more subscribers going on here. That way I can bring more new content to the channel. Um, stay tuned. I have the steering column out of the my 96 Power Stroke that I need to go through and rebuild. And I'm going to show you guys that in a video coming up. So if you've been watching that segment of videos, stay tuned because that is coming up. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of work on this bike. I'm actually going to show you how to properly install a battery tender. It's really simple and straightforward, and it'll really help you out if you're trying to keep your battery charged um, while it's sitting for long periods of time. I'll explain all that in that video, so keep your eyes open for that. If you don't have your post notifications turned on, turn them on, or just keep your eyes open every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 6.30. There'll be a new one up. Uh, the only exception to that is if I'm working on a bigger video, like when I did the 2-2 timing set in the Chevy Cobalt. Unfortunately, I had so much editing time in that video, I missed one of the one of the days because I was still working on trying to get that one edited. Without further ado, we're going to dive right into this, guys. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoy the video. Like I said, hit that subscribe button. Share these videos. Okay, first thing you need to do is get the coolant draining, and since they did not give us a drain on the bottom of this radiator, you actually have to take the lower radiator hose off. The specialty hose clamp, the cable pliers that I'm using to, to release that hose clamp work wonderfully for this. Uh, the, this particular vehicle had the locking hose clamps that actually lock in the open position. So be really careful with those. If they don't lock all the way and you happen to grab one to move it and you trip the catch, they will they'll blood blister your finger like there's no tomorrow. So once I get this locked, make sure you have a suitable catch pan. And if the coolant is clean, you can actually reuse it. So make sure your catch pan's clean and doesn't have a bunch of dirt, crap, and oil in it because you don't want oil in the cooling system. Um, a hose pick like the one I have here is very handy to have to get up inside the radiator hose you just have to be careful because it does have a sharp point on it that you don't poke a hole through the hose but to get in there and actually release the hose from the fittings you'll see me use that at several other points uh, that's a snap-on one but you there you can get other ones you could probably make one if you needed to um, but then just wiggle the radiator hose off and try not to make a mess you're probably going to splatter some coolant there's no way around it if you're lucky you won't have it run down your arm and in your face though so now once you got the coolant draining just let it go leave the pan under there because uh, you're not going to need the pan till later but you need to get the fan shroud out in order to do that there's one 10 millimeter bolt on either side of the fan shroud Remove those, and then there's a plug-in that you can see just off center of the screen. That's what I'm working with, trying to get unplugged right now. And these vehicles have an electronic clutch on the fan, and that plug-in is for the fan. Uh, unless you remove the other end of that plug-in from the fan shroud, the fan and the shroud have to come out at the exact same time. You can't remove one without the other as long as they're still clipped together. Once you get that off, um, before you can get the fan out, you're going to have to, oh, here we go. Now I'm removing the two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, now hose clamps on the upper radiator hose, and these are the same self-locking style hose clamps on this one. So just watch your fingers. Here again, you're going to see me use the hose pick to wrestle the stinking thing off because they were just really stuck on there. Uh, 
this vehicle's got about 150,000 on it, and first time it's had a water pump, so. Now, once you wrestle that off, you can go ahead and knock the uh, fan loose, and I'm actually using the Lyle uh, fan clutch removal tool that uses an air hammer. The thing works great. It sure beats beating on it with a hammer. Um, and yes, I did mute these clips so you don't have to listen to it. But leave the serpentine belt on for this part because that will help to hold the pulley and generally with if you're using a, a removal tool like this I think there's a uh, there's another one called a Texas twister or something but just an, just the resistance of the belt is normally enough for that tool to be able to do its job so in order to get enough room to get the fan shroud out you need to take the two bolts that actually hold the upper mount for the radiator in place and then with some cussing and some pulling you can actually move the radiator about three quarters of an inch to an inch forward and that is enough room to actually lift the fan shroud out it doesn't take a whole lot of extra space but you, they just don't quite give you enough now there's also two transmission lines that mount to the back of the fan shroud that you will have to release from their clips and push to the rear there on the passenger side and you can actually kind of see them in the center of the shot right there those those make it a little more difficult but once you get the fan shroud to the front a little bit and you push them out of their clips it comes out pretty easy uh, now i'm just using an impact and before you take the serpentine belt off take the four bolts out of the water pump pulley and i'm using my impact to do that Once you get those off, then you can remove the serpentine belt, which it's just a 3 8 drive on the uh, tensioner pulley. And make sure you get the belt. You'll see me pull it way up out of the way. Uh, make sure you get it up and out of the way because once you take the water pump off, you're going to have coolant going everywhere. So even though you've drained it, there's still some in the water pump cavity, and you don't really want to get the coolant on the belt. If you do, it's not a big deal. Just Put it in the sink with some water and some dish soap and you can wash it off and it'll be fine. But if you don't wash it off, it may squeak for a little while until the coolant finally wears off the belt. Now once you get that off, it's a 10 millimeter to remove the water pump bolts. And there's, I believe, five of them. So just zip them out and the water pump will come right off the front of the engine. be ready when you take the last one out you're going to get a pretty good burp of coolant so try and get your drain pan underneath of it to catch it. Now this particular water pump I'm going to show you here in a second. The bearings did have some play in it. I could actually feel the play a lot more when I still had the fan mounted to it. Um, now I'm just using a single edge razor blade to scrape as much of the gasket off as possible. Uh, here in a second you're going to see me use my die grinder with a roll lock disc. If you do this be very very careful. You do not want to scar the that's an aluminum face on that block and you don't want to scar it or you'll never get the water pump to seal properly so just very lightly. As I said, the gasket only goes on one way. Uh, if you get your top two bolts in, get them started, it makes it easier to start the rest of them. Uh, don't forget to pull a little yellow plastic piece off the, the front threads. And I'm just using my Milwaukee Impact to run them back down because it has a uh, basically a torque stop feature where as soon as it senses torque, it shuts the impact down. So all I'm doing is actually running them down snug and then I'll come back with a quarter inch ratchet and actually tighten them up. I'm not going through and torquing them. I can get it close enough 
with a quarter inch ratchet where it's never going to leak. Uh, I honestly don't know what the torque spec is on these, but I put a whole mess of water pumps on them. I do, do them the same every time, and I never have an issue with one of them. So, knock on wood, not to say that it won't happen, but it hasn't yet. So. And just work your way around in a kind of a star fashion. Uh, you don't have to, but that's about the best way to do it. Now, most of the reassembly, I'm going to move through pretty quickly. I've sped up most of the video. It's just a matter of putting your pulley back on, getting it tightened down, and then it's your serpentine belt. I mean, everything is just reverse order of removal. So, make sure you've got it routed in the proper direction. Not a big deal. And make sure, one thing you definitely want to check is that it's in all the pulleys. me have a little bit of trouble here. Uh, there are two pins on the bottom of the fan shroud that actually go into the radiator that's what pertains them. And they can be a little bit of a pain to get lined up sometimes. Once you get them lined up, just spin your fan back on. Uh, and it's really not necessary to tighten the fans down. They actually thread on and off. They thread on the opposite way the engine rotates. So if you were to hold that fan and start the vehicle, it would thread it on tight. So the resistance of the fan spinning will actually tighten it up on the on the uh, front of the water pump. So, and as you can see here, I'm wrestling those clamps back on. Just be careful as you release them. You don't put your fingers uh, up a radiator mount. Get it back on. You're going to see me. I'm using an airlift to fill it up. It's less mess. I get more air out of the cooling system on the first try. Uh, they're different types, but they work really well. Once I airlift the cooling system, basically pull a vacuum on it, it'll suck the coolant in, everything's good to go. I will take a garden hose here in just a second before I start it and hose off the front of this engine. That way once I start it and test drive it, I can see any leaks because it will, um, coolant will leave a residue even if it evaporates so you'll be able to see that residue. And just so you guys know, I did put the lower radiator hose back on. I didn't take the camera down there with me. I forgot to grab it. So all you could see was one of my feet sticking out front of the truck. So I just cut that out. I didn't figure you guys would be interested. So here's the first start. And after this, I took it out for a test drive, brought it back while it was still running, checked it for leaks again. Everything looked good. So now it's time to return it to the customer. So. Now you've seen what it takes to put a water pump on a 4.2 in a trailblazer. Alright guys, I hope that helps you out. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Do me a favor. Don't forget to rate the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with your friends, please. And don't forget, get out there and get your hands dirty. You might have a little fun doing it. We will see you on the next one, guys.